Jason Petty. Uh, well, they know me as Mr. Petty. Uh, the rest of the world knows me as Propaganda. Um, some of them know me as such. Uh, with, where we at is it's called the School of Arts and Enterprise in Pomona. Um, kind of like the perfect match for me. Uh, I majored in illustration and I minored in cultural studies. Uh, so the two things, as far as my schooling was concerned, fit perfect here. Um, I teach ninth graders. Uh, this is actually a cross section of a couple different grade levels, but I teach ninth graders. Uh, the class is called Foundations. It's in, it's in the social studies department. Um, but the first semester is more about getting used to the type of education we do here. It's called project-based learning. Um, um, where they, as you see, they work in project groups. Uh, not a lot of standing in front of them. A lot of individual or at least self-directed type stuff. I just go around and help them. You know what I'm saying? It's more like it's more like it's more like uh, facilitating rather than than teaching. You know what I'm saying? We try not to talk at them. We want them to discover. A lot of guided questions. A lot of like it's called it's like inquiry based where I ask them overarching themes and then they put they connect the dots. I could easily stand in front of them and talk at them, but that's not real learning. Like, I don't remember none of those lectures from high school, but I do remember activities. I do remember time like this, sitting down, you know what I'm saying, and I try to give them enough time. And I also try to give them time to uh, get comfortable with themselves because what they really don't understand is that for the rest of their lives, they're not going to sit in rows, you know what I'm saying? They're going to have to work on a team and be able to, given, given a certain block of time, produce a product. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to get them used to doing that so they have to manage their own time and I just kind of walk around and make sure, help them stay on task. I'm Michael Phillips. Um, I'm, I was in Mr. Petty's class in ninth grade, my first year coming here. And like from the first day we met Mr. Petty, like he was basically real with us. He wasn't sugarcoating like most teachers do. And the way he taught us was different. He just didn't sit in front of the room all day and just speak. He actually got us interacted with what he was trying to teach you. and he. Like, you had energy when you left this class. You weren't just like brain dead all the whole time, like most teachers do. My name is Stephanie, and um, I started going to this school freshman year. Uh, I've been here for four years, and um, I remember when I met Mr. Petty. At first, I thought he was kind of weird. He was really bouncy. I was kind of um, crazy, and I was like, I think this guy's crazy. I can't believe he's a teacher. And then um, I never thought I would get so close with him because, um, you know, I went through a lot, like, this past year. I'm Adriana. Mr. Petty's class, to sum it up and all one little thing, is bomb, like, for real. Um, he's real energetic, and, like, the way that he teaches you is, like, a fun way of learning stuff. Like, like, I don't know, what I got out of this class is like more than what I think I got out of freshman science, English, art, anything. Because like I really remember the stuff that he teaches us because of the way that he teaches it. Like, I don't think there'll ever, ever be another teacher to like teach the way that he does. When I started high school, I was supposed to go to Ganesha. I didn't want to go there because I didn't want to be like everybody else. And I came out here, I met Mr. Petty, and I saw that like, he was unique. He stand out. He could sit in a crowd and he'd just be Mr. Petty. He'd just stand out. You could point him out. And I wanted to be like that. And I don't want to be like that. I want to be able to just sit there, be quiet, and people be like, oh, that's Karen. So the class is not necessarily a history class, but it's in the social studies department. It's um, the first semester is about getting used to our type of education. So it's like interpersonal skills, uh, communication, um, things as such. And then the second semester is psychology, uh, sociology, like anthropology and intercultural studies and stuff like that. Um, a lot of like, a lot of home stuff. So I have like a lot of freedom to invent a lot of my curriculum and I can use a lot of uh, you know, home examples and, and examples that they may have experienced to, to make the classroom a lot more real. He's real down to earth and he connects with you and he makes sure that you understand it and he makes sure to say it in a way that would make you understand instead of just teaching his way and like not catering to your needs. It's really phenomenal that um, a teacher like him has so much dedication and I really like the fact that he's there for your students because he's not just like a teacher. He's not someone that's just like gives you grades and gives you homework and gives you papers to do and essays and assignments. He's like an actual person and I really like the fact that he's, he's there for you and 
no matter what, no matter what happens, like he'll be there for you. No matter what, Mr. Petty will love you for that. And it's crazy how you see teachers with dedication like that here. And I think it's like one of the best, best things ever. And I'm really happy and I just hope I go to college and like be successful and be what I want to be. And I'll look back and I will just be like, wow, like I overcome so much and I've pushed through so much. And uh, I did it with the help of my teachers and my friends and some of my family. Like his assignments were actually fun. Like they weren't read this novel and do like active reading on it. It was like read this novel, not even read a novel, read like read these sheets and like base it towards your life or even watch The Simpsons because The Simpsons, he taught us The Simpsons had like real moral values and like stuff about the real world. It was just crazy. Like it was a whole nother learning style. Like a fun history class, like the first one, the fun history class. Like you learn about from like the Harlem Renaissance to why people act the way they do to the fact that we all think we're different, but in reality, we're not, we're not, that's the fact that we're all not, not, we're different, but we all have similarities to somebody else, whether or not we want to accept that. As you see, we got colored folk, right? And, and, but they colored folk styles like span everything. I got like straight gutter punk, punk rock kids that like, hey, my dogs, you know what I'm saying? And then I have my little hoodie hood. I got like Hollywood kids. I got, I got, all types, dude, and they're, you know, they're artists. Some of them aren't artists. Some of them, like, get landed at this school because it's their last chance, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got put out of all the other schools in the district. We're not a part of the district. Um, so, the, you know, this, this, this is their last hope. We have, like, I mean, they hood, you know, they hood kids um, who, whether, whether they know it or not, are, are hoping for something better. Um, my name is Ella Galera. I'm originally from Hawaii. Um, I moved here when I was three um, to get a better life, and my mom wanted a better education for me. And um, basically, like my life story is that I've been through so many troubles and a lot of things, like that happened to me, really suck. It's just been really hard. I got into bad things when I was little. I um, I got into the life where a young child shouldn't be and um, it's really hard and like the things that you do just to like um, just, just to like overcome or try and do better and get something that you want um, like um, what I did when I was younger I knew it was wrong but I did it anyway I sold drugs and I got into that. And then um, my eighth grade year, um, I tried to commit suicide because I didn't want to live anymore because my troubles and my dad walked out on us and my mom was never there. And basically like I raised myself and no one understands. And it's just, it sucks how hard life can be. And when I came here, I thought like, you know, it was kind of be like a regular school, and I didn't want to go to a regular school because I've had so many people that didn't like me. I was always known as the girl that was the outcast, or the freak, or the weirdo, or like something, something crazy. And it's just that when I went here, I thought it was kind of going to be the same. Like I didn't think that, you know, I, I knew I thought I was going to be classified as the weird kid or something. But I came here and I met a lot of people, and it's actually a lot better here. Like. I look at Mr. Petty as like the father I never had. Like he's someone that's always been there for me. He's someone that's always been there to like help me and pull me through things. My name is Karen Ramirez and I'm from El Salvador. And I came over here when I was three years old. I guess like people say, me and my mom, we hop the border. We came here with a purpose of um, getting away from all that poorness in El Salvador because that's it's it's a really small country and there isn't really much education money people get paid ten dollars a day over here ten dollars doesn't get you nothing in November of 2006 um, my brother got diagnosed with cancer and um, it was hard for me at first I didn't like sharing it with people I just I don't know, I thought it was something that I should keep, you know, like to my family and I, and um, at some point, 
I just, I guess it just got out and, you know, people started finding out in school and people would ask about it. Um, I talked to my teachers about it so they would know, you know, what's going on. And um, I still kept up with my schoolwork and everything. And I remember I came to tell Mr. Petty that my brother had cancer. And, um, you know, he told me that everything was going to be fine and everything does happen for a reason. And God has his purposes for everything. Um, living with something like that in your life is really hard, especially right now. My brother is only 23. You know, he was barely starting to, to live. He was about to get his own place and move out of the house. He was helping out my parents financially. And when he got sick, like his whole life just, you know, got put on hold. Um, for me, it was hard because my brother and I are really, really close. And when he got sick, I felt like, like it was happening to me too. And it was hard. Um, I still like, I still find it really hard to talk about it with people. I've never really been into the idea of the product of the environment, but some of them honestly are. You know what I'm saying? If, we, if you had a chance to walk through the city, like Pomona is, is not, it, it ain't the funnest place, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's dope having a place like this where you could really be in the trenches, you know what I'm saying, with the students. And a lot of my music and poetry actually comes from their stories um, and, and their experiences. And you just, you look them in their eyes and it's just like, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, most kids be, be begging to get out of school or ditching school. Like some of these kids, this is the only safe place they got. So they rush here. You know what I'm saying? This is the only place where somebody is actually telling them something positive about themselves. That's, that's encouraging them. That's, that's saying, you know, they can do it. I just think it's really great because to have a father figure or a figure of some sort that is willing to push you and just go through your dreams and like, well, just be like, you need to succeed. Like, you have great potential to succeed and you can do it. I think that that's the best thing that's here at the school. And I, I love the fact that he could just, like, I love the fact that I have a family here. I enjoy coming to school. Like, it's my getaway. School is my getaway. Like, it's so much easier than being home. Like, here at school, it's like, you get to have fun, you get to be yourself, and you get to, you don't argue, you don't fight, and it's just, you have your friends that will be there for you, and it will be, like, phenomenal. It will be amazing. It's just like, here, the school is like my second home. I don't want to leave. Like, practically, they have to kick us out of school so we could just go home. We'll be here till like six or like seven, maybe like 5.36 at night, and we'll be here and we'll have fun. There's so many people, because a lot of kids usually don't like going to school, and here's a place where it's like, wow, like you could actually be yourself here, and you could be an individual, and no one will judge you for that. Mr. Petty helped me out a lot. I would talk to him about it, and a lot of my teachers here, that's what's nice about this school, that they're not just your teachers, they're your friends. And to me, Mr. Petty is like, you know, like a friend. Um, he's a really hyper person, and that's the kind of person I am. I'm always happy, you know, bouncing around everywhere, and that's why I get along with him very well. And I would talk to him about it. To me, this affected my life a lot, also because being a teenager, you know, you go out a lot and everything. All of that changed for me. I wouldn't go out with my friends anymore because I had to be at home babysitting my little brother. I have to be going with my mom places, helping her out around the house. You know, I feel like I missed out on a lot during, you know, my junior year, but I also learned a lot. I learned how to appreciate life so much. Like people, you know, a lot of people always like go through small things and they say, oh, like I appreciate my life so much. But when you're in a point where you're about to lose someone that you love a lot, when you're at that point, you learn, you don't learn to appreciate life. You learn how to love your life, how to, how to treat it like it's something that's holding by a string that's about to rip. It was, it's just, 
you know, you see things like this happening to other people on TV and you never, you never think about it happening to you. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, you know, I'm sorry that that's happening to them and you never think about it happening to you. And when it does happen, you don't know what to do. And a lot of the times I felt lost and I didn't know who to go to. I, w I didn't like talking about it. And um, it's, it's pretty hard when you, like, you want to achieve your goals and no matter what, you always hit a dead end. But it's like you just got to like, turn around and like, do it all over again and just try better and, do, and, be, and be what you want to become. Like, live life to the fullest. Don't stop and be like, oh, well, I can't, I can't do this anymore, so I'm just going to give up. Never give up. Like, Mr. Petty told me that. Like, he told me to never give up and always like try to achieve my goals and always try to like become something and like be great. Like I've had teachers tell me that I have a lot of potential and I know that I I know that I do and I know that I could become something that I want to be. Like I want to be a well-known photographer or an artist or something that's like that will be well known. That's what I want to be known as. I want to be something that like my family thought I would never become because no one in my family has ever been to college like like they've started it but they've never completed it and I want to be the first person to actually do that. A lot of people are uncomfortable because my class may seem a lot louder than others but it don't bother me because I'm listening for understanding and when they get excited when they're getting loud that means they're excited they're excited about what they're about to do they was running all over the room because they're, about, they're excited about the skit they're about to perform about stuff they have to learn. I don't know who said learning had to not be fun. You know what I mean? So that's what's going down. Or why a classroom has to look a certain way. Like I came in here, I got my cans together and graffitied up the room. I mean, the kids ain't brought them in yet, but behind, behind you, you'll see that a little later, are my students' baby pictures. Mr. Petty's class was like one of the best class that year. We, all, we always look forward to this class, like better than like science, or math, like so, Mr. Petty's class and art class were good. And Mr. Petty was also involved like with art. Miss P, when Miss P was here, was spray painting and like art in general. Like he explained to us like what actual graffiti was, not like tagging on walls, but like what it actually meant. Like Mr. Petty was just real with us. He never lied to us. He was always honest. If he spoke about something, he was gonna be straightforward to you and tell you 100% of what it basically meant. And then about his rap career. Yeah, Mr. Petty was always open to us about that too, about where he came from and everything. Check this out, baby. You can start that over. We finna make this happen. This is what we call wake up music, so we gonna try to wake y'all up. All right, here we go. Yes, again, my name is Propaganda, part of a very large group. This is my boy Rafi Dell. We finna set this off. Y'all can sit down if you want, but I'm gonna work, baby. Listen. Witness, speak this, me spit this, made the decision this morning, one way to witness, call it what you want, I call it handling business. Uh, they're about to uh, perform the lesson, really. They're going to teach the class. You know, I, they have the worksheet in front of them. They're going to process the information, and they're going to show us pretty much what the words mean. And then we'll have a dialogue back and forth just in case they're incorrect as to what's going down.
a week and she know I got food stamps and unemployment. <laughs> That's the class, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a high school, it's, you know, all four grades. Every class is, runs a little different, but it's all based on collaborative groups and projects, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the day job, you know what I mean? That's, that's what we're doing during the day, and um, it's dope.